guys just let me know where you're watching where you're joining from welcome i'm latoya mcbean pompey an immigration lawyer for those of you who are um who have been following me for some time now you know that we practice only immigration law at mcbean law and we had a terrific 2023 and we're looking forward to having another terrific year um, for our clients now as you're coming i see netherlands is in the house oregon um, and let's see TikTok. where are you guys joining from today thank you so much for joining from michigan kenya awesome florida excellent excellent and let's see on youtube and facebook as you're coming on board just say hello give me some hearts likes and also do me the favor of sharing this with your feed hey there fred thanks so much for being with me chetty chetty is in the house thank you um tewo tewo is in the house yvette thank you so much come on in happy new year happy new year happy new year so tonight we're going to have our first q a of 2024 um our firm is still open we uh the phones will um you can call us at 888-462-4006 we're still open contact us to book your appointment to meet with one of the attorneys jamaica is in the house nigeria hey there laverne hey there and happy new year to you ma'am and for those of you who had already met with us um i greet you thank you so much for um being back thank you so much for following our clients hello nice to have you i know that our clients are also watching they're always watching okay it's so nice to have you all hey there andrew so um at McBean Law, we um, have a terrific newsletter, guys, and I'd love for you to subscribe to what I consider the number one immigration newsletter um, out there. And each week we send terrific content to those of uh, you who are our subscribers. I invite you to subscribe today. Tomorrow we have a terrific email going out about marriage-based green cards. Um, subscribe at mcbeanlaw.com forward slash subscribe so that you'll be in the loop. And then on Friday, you'll get our newsletter, our e um, weekly news uh, summary on friday sunday you'll get your cute you'll you'll get a nice good news inspiring story and then you'll get on tuesday you'll get a q a answering your questions so if for example tonight if you um if i'm not able to answer all of the questions tonight um you could also email your question to us or you can leave your question here on social media because we do scan your questions and we select questions for our q a newsletter so your question may very well be selected this is a good and exciting time to be doing immigration friends we've started a new year thank you so much morgan for um adding our phone number there it's always nice to see you sir thank you um now we have um we, this is an exciting time, friends, to be involved in immigration. It's the start of the new year, an election year. And so now is a great time to just get in, do what you've got to do with immigration. Things are going to get a little intense, as you guys know, later on in the year with this election season. And so now is a perfect time to start your case if you have a case. And we'd be happy to speak with you about what those possibilities are. Um, also go on our website to look at success stories so that you know you need to be encouraged during this time go read our success stories on our website now um, let's see let's go through some of your questions tonight okay let's go through some of your questions hey there Francis from Queens um, now uh, let's see let me scroll back up. I see uh, so many uh, different countries are here. Awesome. Let's see. What do you guys have for me on Instagram and uh, TikTok? Let's see. Hold on a second, guys. And as you're doing this, give me some hearts and likes as um, I'm scrolling through here. Um, 
Someone is asking about an F, uh, what is the best way for an F1 student to stay in the United States after graduation? Um, that's such a good question. Uh, truly, um, the F1 process can be a little frustrating because although it's for your duration of stay here in the United States, once you're out of status, it's really a very hard end to your situation. And so um, for some people, here's how they do it. They, uh, they are part of, they're in a STEM program, okay? And then they get their OPT, which, is, which allows them to work. And after that, they get maybe an H-1B visa. They're offered that opportunity. Um, and then they can get their green card through their employer. Um, another way of doing it is to also consider the national interest waiver if you're eligible for it. And we do that process as well, the national interest waiver. Um, speak with you can speak with us about that what your background your qualifications are or even how to position yourself uh, for such an opportunity to self-petition uh, for some people they're in a relationship and if it progresses to marriage well that that's how some people get their green card and, uh, and you're not supposed to to do it that way of course because that would be considered fraud but uh, for some people who are in a genuine relationship, they transition to residency through marriage. Um, now, uh, we'll need to look at your background to see what you've done, what you've accomplished. And if you need to leave the United States to go back home and do some things there and strengthen your eligibility for a self-petition pathway, then then that's what you'll need to do. But preferably, I know that you'd want to stay here in the United States. It's tough. I won't, I won't, you know, sugarcoat this. It is tough if you don't have a job offer lined up with uh, transitioning into a non into another visa and then ultimately being eligible for a green card. So speak with us about your background and what's possible for you, okay? Now, someone says that she has a pendant asylum case since 2016, and that's not uncommon. Um, she says, well, what can I do? Um, so with this asylum, you know, um, it can be expedited, okay? You can put in for an expedited process with your asylum application I always warn our uh, clients or people who come to us and want to discuss this asylum, speeding up their asylum case, that you've got to really be ready. If you have a reason to speed it up in which we'll assess that and talk with you about whether you really do have a reason to expedite your case, you've got to be ready to act, right? You've got to be ready to go into that interview and kill it. You've got to be ready with your your um, eligibility, your strong case, your evidence, and be ready to be questioned about the case. And if you have a strong asylum case, it is a good, it, it's a great opportunity to get it to get a decision by USCIS. But if your asylum case is one of those cases that was filed late, and you don't really have, <laughs> this is quite a sweater, guys. And if you really don't have. Um, a strong case well then you have to really think about what you're doing because if you don't have a strong case and it was filed late and USCIS doesn't like the late filed cases they really don't it's preferable your your chances of success with a late filing is greater in immigration court than it is with USCIS unless you're from a certain country where some very compelling things had happened there but um, speak with us you could speak with us about whether your case is a good case for you to try to speed up and um or not okay uh let's see thank you for that question and guys thank you so much for being with me tonight let's see what else uh you have you know, I, this is a great question, and I know where this is coming from. Uh, her question is this. Is there any way a 65-year-old woman 
um, can get a green card if she's been here for eight years she doesn't have any children to file for her and so it you know with that situation no children and i'm assuming also no spouse it does take you away out of the family-based system even if you had a sibling um that the person can start that process for you but the person will not be able to completely finish it for you because you've overstayed and you'll need to go back home at the end of that lengthy process that's lengthy sibling process so we would be assessing for other things like whether you're eligible potentially for a humanitarian pathway like um, uh, well where are you from what's going on in your country can this even possibly be a late asylum filing or a crime victims filing uh, so we would be looking on the humanitarian side of things um, so it's the pathways are so narrow uh, but I have some older vid videos out there about what options are available for people who've overstayed in the U.S. But you have to have something to work with, right? Either a petitioner or, unfortunately, the way our system is set up, be a vic victim, unfortunately. Um, so uh, consider, consider those things, okay? The overstay in this situation, what makes it a bit challenging is the overstay. Because once an adult has overstayed in the U.S., then it really does narrow their opportunities for a green card, particularly if they don't have um, any U.S. citizen or even a green card holder close relative who could really be their uh, petitioner. So, um, all right. Thank you for that question, though. I appreciate it. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year. Um, thank you for that. Andrew has said that he is waiting for his I-130 to be approved for his kids. Can he put in for their I-485? Now, the I-485 is the green card application and um, for adjustment of status. If they're here in the United States and they're eligible for adjustment of status, the I-485 can be filed. Now, believe it or not, guys, even for children, for children who had overstayed their visa, um, they are not eligible for adjustment of status if they had not continuously maintained a lawful status. So we would, Andrew, we would look at your case and um, and and look to see when did the children come into the United States. Um, or did they overstay? What's going on with them? What's going on also with the visa bulletin in that F, uh, whatever, I'm not sure what category. Actually, let me back up. I was speaking with you guys about um, green card holder parent. Andrew, I don't know why I'm assuming you're a green card holder. My apologies. If you're a U.S. citizen, tell me. If he is a U.S. citizen, it's a very different process. Children who overstay their visa can obtain adjustment of status through their U.S. citizen parent. They are considered an immediate relative. Andrew, I'm so used to talking to green card holder parents who are in this dilemma of having children here in the U.S. who had overstayed and they cannot adjust their status. So, um, uh, so tell me if you are a U.S. citizen, Andrew, or if you are a green card holder. Okay. Um, Let's see. I did, let's see, I did my interview July 2021, okay? I-130 is approved. It was approved at the interview, but my I-485 application still says interview was completed. My lawyer has been send in requests, but I haven't heard anything yet. Um, so this here's a person who has an I-130 that was approved. You said at the interview. Did you get an Did you get an approval notice? Um, if you did get an approval notice and you you do not yet have your green card application approved, and this is 2021 that you were interviewed. I would say you should definitely talk with us about this because I think the government is doing additional background check 
on your case. This is um, this is an, an unreasonable delay in your case and there's something that might be going on with the background that they're looking deeper into. So you should have heard from them right away if they were gonna approve that I-485. So this is not uncommon, guys, and we work on cases just like this, where you've been waiting, you've, you had your interview with your spouse, I'm assuming, Nikita, that it's a spousal case. You had your interview years ago, and still no decision well something's going on right and when you do learn what is going on or what was the cause of that delay you really will need an attorney to help you process next steps okay so give us a call we'd be happy to look into that the other thing to consider too is whether your case is a good case to file the mandamus which is a complaint a federal compl um, complaint a, f a, a complaint that's filed in federal court that would allow you to um, speed up the case, achieve that next step, right, in the case. So that could be a possibility for you as well. This is a long time, long time to wait after your interview. So for sure, um, you definitely, I would say, get, get some legal help, reach out to us. We have experience in that area, okay? All right, Instagram, you're quiet, okay? You're quiet. Um, let's see, maybe you're not quiet. I don't know. Let's see what Instagram is saying. Um, someone is saying on Instagram, U.S. citizen spouse married three years filed for divorce and while waiting the divorce here and at the end of the month, they filed the form I-485 10-year green card application was approved without interview. It is valid. Wow. So you guys are sending some very good, deep um, questions that require legal help. And we work on cases like this one as well. Here you have an individual who had a marriage case. Okay. She, got a, she has a green card now based on marriage to a U.S. citizen and but they filed for divorce and and the divorce was um you said while awaiting divorce here and at the end of the month the green well the question is was your divorce finalized when you had gotten your green card but even so the fact that a divorce was filed can be a very significant problem when you seek naturalization down the road uh so definitely work with us or um work with us on this issue or contact us to talk about what this scenario actually means uh, for you, okay? All right, thank you guys. Give me some hearts and likes. Okay, so someone has asked me to speak on the new fees um, of USCIS. So USCIS, for those of you who don't know or who are not yet subscribed to us, if you're subscribed, you should know. You're, you should go check your email. Um, when did we send out that uh, that newsletter about the fee increase? I think it was last week. But anyway, so USC, and I'm just going to speak on a higher level because I don't know the numbers. Okay, and I think I also covered this too in my um, my last news video on YouTube. So go watch that. But USCIS, friends, has increased um, the filing fees for certain applications. They're doing it incrementally. They had a big lofty plan, which we talked about last year. I talked about last year to do like an agency wide across the board fee increase um, to, to like ev almost every form. Let me see if I could pull up um, last week's email here just to get that in front of me while I do this. So they have this big lofty plan to have um, to increase their filing fees. They didn't implement that fully yet, okay? They have done it though only to premium processing fees. They're calling this, and this is their bulletin here they're calling it um, inflation adjustment okay there they've they've made this adjustment 
uh, to premium processing. And so go on their website. Uh, it talks about how it impacts this fee increase impacts the forms that are eligible for premium processing. This only this is only attached to the forms that are eligible for premium processing, which is a faster way to process uh, cases. So this is the form I-129, the form I-140, form I-539, and the form I-765 for certain F1 students in certain categories, okay, only. So that's what's going on, and this is going to, the, the fee change is going to go into effect on February 26. Um, all right, Th thank you for that question. Let's see if I could uh, get back up here. Perfect. What else do you guys have for me? Such a good question. Fatima is asking if your visa is expired, will it affect your adjustment of status case? Uh, Fatima, give me some hearts for answering your about to answer your question there. It's quiet on TikTok. The answer is no, it does not impact your adjustment of status case. Your, the visa that you entered in on, guys, into the United States. Um, Basically, it becomes no good, really. You can't use it for any further travels if you've decided you've made the decision to overstay in the United States and apply for a green card. You cannot rely on that visa, although that visa may have a uh, it's going to expire in five years or three years or whenever. It doesn't even matter. Totally irrelevant for the adjustment of status process. The government doesn't care about it at all, so it won't impact your adjustment of status case. Now, how, here's how it can, though, uh, impact your adjustment of status case, okay? Here's how your visa can impact it. It can impact it if in that visa application you have inconsistent information or misrepresentation or lies, of course, that's what misrepresentation is. Uh, if you have misrepresentations in that visa application that led to you getting the visa from the U.S. Embassy and now you're applying for adjustment of status, that's how the government can then put two and two together and it could be a big problem for the adjustment of status case. And if there, there is a problem with misrepresentation, they will inform you of it and um, they will inform you of it and um, you will need a waiver. N Nikita, I see that. Thank you. You did receive that approval notice. You should still meet with us. You definitely need to talk with us. Um, thank you for letting them know, letting me know. Andrew confirmed that he is a green card. I don't know how I knew that, Andrew. He confirmed he is a green card holder. Um, still a green card holder andrew let's get you on to citizenship okay naturalization if you're eligible could make a big difference for the children uh let's see who else um antonio thank you for this antonio is asking um if an application for citizenship is denied the first time how long should you wait before andrew if your application for naturalization has been denied definitely speak with us about that because we, we would want to firstly dive further into what led to the denial was it anything related to days that you didn't accrue presence and you know all of those technicalities resident continuous residence or anything like that we would want to see or was it something Thing, a lot more substantive um, that led to it uh, because there's usually a little period of uh, you know that you'd have to wait uh, before you can reapply again so um, speak with us about that all right so that we can dive deeper into those issues thank you very much <laughs> Thank you for the, the cute heart. By the way, when you put hearts on my head on TikTok, it makes editing these videos really, really tough later on, okay? Um, but I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Um, if USCIS requests information, how long does it take to get back for them to get back to you? So it depends on what they've asked for. Um, we've seen we've seen it take we've seen it take like a week 
like you know in terms of the decision if it's if it's going to be a very fast approval um after getting that request for evidence it, it thinks it happens fast right um other times it depends on what else they were seeking because sometimes they're seeking documents that will force that um for the purpose of them doing additional background check on you. So then that could take a little longer, okay? So it really depends on what type of evidence were they seeking from you, okay? Can you travel with a pending asylum case? Yes, you can uh, on your advanced parole only. Um, and be careful not to go back home, of course, right? Do not go back home. Um, let's see. Let's see what's going on over here on YouTube uh, and TikTok. Yeah, Rink, Rinkal Patel is asking, is there anything I can, anything that he can do to make his I-130 case go faster? The I-130 can also be expedited the, the, with USCIS, and we've done that successfully for some clients. One thing to note with expedited a form like the I-130 is that, um, what you that a visa must be available a visa must be available in the case for that so it's it, it you know if you're if it's an immediate relative case then you can seek to expedite it at any time but if it's one of those family preference cases and you're actually in a category that whereby the visa is not yet available then you cannot expedite that case so you'll have to wait it out okay all right. Let's see, what else do you guys have? I don't have any news about DACA at this time. Uh, Miriam, I, I, I have not really been tracking it that closely. Um, If your case is being actively reviewed, you just have to wait until the government sends you. Someone is asking, what should I do if my case is actively, is just being reviewed? Um, you wait until they send you a notice or a letter indicating whether you're, you've been approved or if you um, were seeking, if you were approved or if they need something additional from you. I see that your RFE was for a birth certificate. Uh, I think that was the one. Um, so depending on what your, what the story is with your case, if the government is seeking a birth certificate, is it because maybe one wasn't submitted with the case and it was just missing? And if so, that's an easy, easy fix. And if that's the case, then, you know, you should be hearing back from them soon. But if it's the scenario whereby you had included a birth certificate and yet they're now questioning whether there is really a true relationship between you and the petitioner then it can drag out a little longer than that uh, someone is asking do we handle the eb2 national interest waiver yes we do that and we have um we have some success stories on the niw from 2023 so go ahead and um and Take a look at our website success stories um let's see it's after six and i'm going to answer one more question okay so charmaine hi there thank you charmaine says i petitioned um, I went 30 for my son. Thank you for that. Um, for my son since June 2019. Um, what is the update on the F2B unmarried child over 21? Charmaine, do you have uh, access to Google? If you have access to Google, what you'll want to do is just go in and just Google Visa Bulletin. And I would put in January 2024 and just see what they're up to in that F2B category, because that's really what I have to do right now, as a matter of fact. Um, so F2B, October 2015, all right? So that's what the government is up to. They have not, unfortunately, gotten up to, and this is October 25th, 
15 for basically most countries, okay? This is um, excluding Mexico and the Philippines for the F2B second preference category for um, those who are filing for an adult, uh, green card holders who are filing for adult son or daughter. Um, so you, your case, your visa is not yet um, available, unfortunately. So it's gonna take some more years on that. Guys, I'm gonna jump off now. I appreciate you joining me and um, stay tuned. I'm going to announce very soon when these live sessions are going to be. I'm thinking right now, Monday and Wednesday, but I'm processing that. Um, so, but when, when that's over, when my processing is finished, <laughs> I will let you guys know um, so that you know when to expect these live Q and A's and join me each week on these live Q and A's. I hope they were helpful to you. Share this with other people. Thanks so much for being with me. And I hope that you guys will have a wonderful 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 evening have uh i'll see you soon bye bye